Has there ever been a point in time where you just got done making a beat you thought was a banger? And we're like, yo, I'm gonna export this, send it to my Gmail, send it to my phone. I'm gonna go in my car and listen to this. You're all hyped up. You're walking out to the car. You start the ignition or push the button, whatever you got. Connect the Bluetooth and then you play the file and you're just disappointed. You're like, why does the bass sound so quiet? And if it's not quiet, why does it sound muddy and like I can't hear the melodies? That's what we're gonna be fixing today because I've been there. There's been so many times in the past where I would make countless beats and in my headphones, they sounded good. I'm not gonna lie. They sound good on headphones. They sound good on studio monitors most of the time. But once you take it to that car, you just realize something's not off. And then your first thought is, okay, hold on, let me play it. Let me play a song on my Apple Music or my Spotify and compare it to this. And then you play that song and that song loud as hell is booming. The bass is going crazy on that song. And you're like, bro, why does my beat sound like trash? Why does the 808 not kick, man? Why can't I hear it the way I want to hear it? So that's what we're going to be fixing today. I'm going to show you guys how to mix car worthy beats so that when you get done making your fire beat and you take it to the car, it sounds like something on your Spotify or Apple Music account. So with that being said, let's get into the video. But before we do, I have not seen you before. Not you, you you already subscribed. I'm talking about you. Look down at the subscribe button. You see how it's still red? Couldn't be me. It couldn't be me. I'm gonna give you five seconds. All right, man, let's go. All right, so I loaded up a beat inside of FL Studio that I made in a previous video. You can see it right here. I'm going to show you guys how to mix your 808s properly so that you never have to worry about going in the car and then not sounding fire because I know that's super disappointing. Before we do anything, I'm going to take these two plugins off because these are the two plugins that are going to change the way your 808 sound. The first mistake you guys are making and the mistake I was making for the longest time is I had my 808 pushed up way up here, bro. It's like we try to max our 808s out. We want them to be as loud as possible in the headphones, but that's actually counterintuitive. You don't want to do that because the way the headphones work and the way an actual sound system works, they're, they're very different, but very similar. But if you can get it to sound good in a car, headphones and on studio monitors, that's how you know you're doing it right. But if it only sounds good in the headphones and not good in the car or not good on the studio monitors or any other speaker, there's something that has to be changed and we're gonna fix that. So like I said, let's go ahead and play this beat. This is your bass, right? You got the bass way up here. You got it maxed out. And in the headphones, again, I get it. It sounds good. But then boom, this is your melody. You see how when we're making beats, don't you think it's odd that we keep the melody around this level, but we try to blast the 808? And we're all guilty of it. But the truth is, you want your 808 at the same level as your melody, if not lower. Because when you're in a car, that's when things get muddied out because the speakers in a car or like you have an actual surround sound system, but you have an actual sound system in the car. When you're bumping the song in the car, if you think about it logically, of course the 808 is going to sound louder than your melody. Your melody is going to be flushed out. You're not even going to hear the melody as nicely. And the 808 is going to be muddy because you're, you have it past the level where it should be. But before we get into that, I just want to show you my thought process on why we shouldn't have our 808s all the way up here. So if I bring an EQ up, if you got your 808 all the way up here, and this is your entire 808, and you have it blasted, and your melody's down here, your melody's sitting right here, and you have all these frequencies in the bass pushing up like crazy. So that's, that's what happens with your melodies getting muddied out. And then also on top of that, it's almost like the louder your 808 gets, on this side, like when you're pushing this up and you're making it peak. I can't lie, again, it sounds good in headphones, but when, when you go to split test it between a speaker system, a car speaker system, 
um, your your AirPods, your whatever it may be. It's gonna sound different on each speaker system you're using or headphones you're using. So I'm not the most technical guy. I'm not I'm not a scientist. I'm not a uh, I wouldn't call myself an audio engineer. I've just learned through trial and error what works best for me, what I've seen other producers do, and really what you want to do is you want to compress your 808. That's number one. You want to limit your 808, and then you want to bring it down on the level so let's get into the tips now the two effects i like to do to fix this issue of not having a car worthy 808 is step one i'll listen to my bass and the melody what you want to do is you want to have your 808 peaking at around negative five decibels if you see in the top right when i'm when I move this knob in the top right, you can see how many decibels I'm going down. I like to keep mine anywhere from negative five to negative 10. What works best for me is closer to negative five and seven. I like to have my 808 a little bit quieter than my melody. But again, when you're in the car, quieter isn't always worse. Sometimes quieter, it sounds so stupid, but it makes it louder. What the hell? Oh my God, no way. And I can actually prove that um, in the parametric EQ. Once you guys start mixing your 808s from now on, put this little filter on it. Cut all the lows off up until 27 hertz. Tell me your 808 doesn't sound louder. Look, let me turn this EQ off. Look, you might not be able to hear a difference because you're probably playing this with headphones or you're watching it on your phone speaker so you're not going to get the full effect but if you just trust me that even just cutting it to 27 hertz and cutting off the frequencies that your ears can't physically hear it's going to be perceived as louder i don't know how it works i learned this with my boy cairo like i'd say around 2020 so you want to have a hard cut on your 808 drag it over to 27 hertz so anything under 27 hertz you don't hear that's step number one step number two Going back to my first point, you don't want your 808, you don't even want it above this line right here. Meanwhile, we got it way above there, so we gotta cut that out. So look, we're gonna drag this down. And I know it's uncomfortable in the beginning because you're like, oh bro, I can barely hear the bass in my headphones. Bro, you got to trust me because we're not done yet. So second thing I like to do to fix this issue is add a soft clipper. I'm not an audio engineer. I don't make these plugins. I just know what works and I test things out. From what I've learned, it's pretty much like a limiter slash compressor. What I like to do with my 808s, I push that thing all the way up. I ain't gonna lie, I get ignorant with it. Now we're gonna head to the limiter. So when you first load up Fruity Limiter, it's gonna look something like this. First things first, I put the ceiling all the way up. I'm not trying to limit my 808. In this scenario, I'm just trying to compress it. And again, this is just stock plugins so you get the idea. If you have actual compression plugins, use those, play around with those. But I like to put this ratio up, honestly, as far as I can take it. Sometimes I put it a little bit lower, but I, I like to put it around here or just fully up. So in this case, just so you can hear the difference, I'm gonna put it fully up and then the threshold. This is where you have to kind of play the 808 and hear it out for yourself. This is where the compression comes in and you'll see the needle moving. So the needle's almost acting like a limiter. So basically anything above that needle, it's getting pushed back down. So it kind of equalizes the beat out in the high frequencies of the 808. See how I have the threshold all the way up? The 808 frequencies go all the way up here, but the second I move it down, anything under this blue line that I'm moving, which is the needle, that's it getting compressed. So it's, it won't let anything get louder than that blue needle, so. And then from here, I like to just put the gain up because as you can see right here, we had the 808 up here, but it dropped it down once we compressed it. So you can add some of that gain back in.
Hopefully you guys hear a difference. If you can't, maybe you have to play this video in the car so you can really hear a difference. With the 808, once again, if I take this limiter off, that's really the main reason, right? Right here and us dropping this from here to here is the biggest difference in this 808. So that's it for today, man. I hope this helps somebody out there. I know I, I definitely needed this tutorial a long time ago. So if I genuinely helped you out in this video, make sure to drop a like so I know that you want more of these little tips. Um, again, if you're not part of the family, stop being weird, man. Just subscribe. I love y'all. I'll talk to you soon. Go make some beats.